All right, welcome to part two. Mr. H's webcam's not working this time, so I don't know what's going on. So you don't get to see this smiling face, but we're going to live. Okay, 19. We started off, first video, 1 through 18, 19 through the end. Here we come. What's the location of the vertex for the following quadratic? Reminder, when you are looking for, oh dear, Hardy, x minus h squared plus k. When you're looking for your vertex, it's right here. It's the opposite of that. Negative 5, all bells, and keep this. Negative 5, 7. Negative 5, negative 5, 7. Be careful because, yeah, real close to each other. Just got to make sure that we get that one right. Same type of thing with axis of symmetry. So I look. X, axis of symmetry is just the x value of your vertex. So if I look at this, I'm like, hey, if I'm thinking of that up above, my vertex is at negative 3, negative 6. There that is. But be careful. That's your x value. If there happened to be a y equals in there, maybe review number 2. You'd have to keep an eye out for that. Okay, what is the domain of the following quadratic? Okay, easiest question on the whole thing. I don't have to look at a picture. I don't have to look at nothing. What's the domain every single time on these quadratics? Every time. So don't even stray from that. Now, range, I have to think a little. It depends. What's the range? If you remember from what we did before, I'd always say take your vertex and your range will be from the y value of your vertex to infinity. But here's the awesome thing about technology. If you forget, we can still get there. It's still a little bright, isn't it? There we go. If you look at the graph, okay, remember, range is my y value. From bottom to top. Okay, it's going up forever. I see that. The bottom is right here, and I can look, and it's like one, two, three. So I can look at it that way too. But this is the magic number. Okay. Three to infinity, we're set there. All right, application time. You're like, oh great. Maya shoots an arrow. Okay, last what's the maximum height? Height is the y value. So here we go. Negative 16t squared. Well, we use x, but not the minus. Negative plus 80x plus 5. Graph. So I find out I have a slight problem. The maximum is up here somewhere, but I can't see it. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna make it where I can. Zoom. Zoom fit, because that is gonna fit it where I can see the top. I don't see a lot of it, but I see enough of it. And so now, since I'm looking for the max, it's second trace. Number four. And just like we did before. And this is why it's been important all along to practice. So you're not just doing this for the first time now. I'm going to use my left and right arrows only to get as close to that maximum as I can. There's my little cursor guy. That's pretty close. And at that point, I'm going to let the questions guide me. Left bound is left arrow. One, two, three. Enter. Makes a bound. Question changes. Now it says right bound. Right arrow. One, two, three. That got me back to where I started. One, two, three. Enter. Both my boundaries have been set. The arrows are pointing at each other. That's really important with this. And I hit enter one last time. And again, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the maximum height, the y value of 
my maximum. The x would tell me how long, but it didn't ask that. It didn't say how long did it take to get to the maximum. It said, how high is it? That's how I find it. And I probably, once I did that, to get my calculator back to normal for the rest of my problems, I'd set it back to zoom number six. Because the second question says, how long until the arrow hits the ground? In other words, where is the x-intercept? Right there. So how do we find it? Second trace, number two. Second trace, number two. And if you haven't practiced these before, you're going to need to do it a few times. Because again, on a final exam, you can't sit and ask and have me come and tell you to, which buttons to press. I'm not going to tell you. So... When I get here, you're like, well, it's way over there. What do I do? Start hitting the right button until you see it show up. And you notice it disappeared off my screen. I'm not concerned. I'm just hitting the right arrow still until it reappears momentarily. Oh, there it went. Okay, that's not real close, but that's about as close to the x-axis as I'm going to get, and that's okay. The button presses are exactly the same as they were for the maximum. Left bound, left arrow, one, two, three. Enter. I know it disappeared. It was still there, though. It's still there. Right bound. Right arrow. One, two, three. Back where I started. And one, two, three more. Enter. Trapped. We're in the middle. Bam. 5.06 seconds. Okay? So I got to be able to function with some of that stuff. I got to be able to play with the buttons and know some of these things. Keep rolling. Oh, the algebra 2 F word. Multiply. Add. All kinds of clues. The plus tells me the signs are the same, but which sign? That one. Now, again, on the final, could that be a minus and that be a plus? Sure. Could they all be pluses? Sure. I've got to be able to function, but if you've been practicing, this won't be bad. So multiplies to 24 and adds up to 10 would be 6 and 4. But as we have stated before many, many times in here, if you're not sure, start dividing numbers in until you find a pair that it can get you to 10. 12 and 2 can, but... The signs would have to be opposite because it'd be 12 minus 2. So that doesn't work here. So I got to keep going. 6 and 4 can get me to 10, and they're the same signs. That's the one I need. So you got to watch this a bit because if you'd have chosen 2 and 12, hopefully you'd take a second to look and go, wait a minute. Uh, that's going to mess this up and make that negative, I hope. Solve. Set each of those equal to 0 and get x alone. And we're set. Almost there. Solve by square rooting, no decimals. Get that squared off of there. Remember, whenever we do the square root step, when we're square rooting, since we know there's two answers, that's plus minus. So there's going to be the two. Then I also look to see is there a perfect square that goes in? And so I'm like, well, let's see. Nine's a perfect square, but that's a decimal. Four, okay. Four and three goes into 12, but when we break them down, one of the two values has to be a perfect square. Like two and six doesn't help me here. Two's not a perfect square, neither's six. You know, look at your list if you need to. So, two gets out of radical jail and good behavior. When we go to bring the three over, remember, this is the caution spot. That plus minus is a wall on the right side. It does not let anything through. So the three can hang out over here, but it ain't, it ain't touching any of the rest of my problem. So yes, I have to have the plus minus. Yes, I have to have that broken down. Okay, Solve using the quadratic formula. 
no decimals. A, B, C. Then just follow the form. You're like, is it going to be there like this? It is. So the opposite of B would be 8 plus or minus the square root of B squared in parentheses minus 4AC all over 2A. And since it says no decimals, remember the only thing you are typing in is this stuff beneath. You are not putting the radical over it. So... Oh, negative plus or minus. Oh, reminder. Uh-oh. Oh, I said stop, stop. There was some thievery going on here. I looked at this. I'm like, oh, oh, I remember. I remember. It's negative. We want it to be positive. We got to pull an eye out. Eight plus or minus I square root of 20 over 6. Now, again, here comes good, better, best. That's good. That's good, but we can do better because 20 has a perfect square as a factor. So the square root of 4 is 2, oops, 2i, because i is out here as well, square root of 5 over 6. That's better. You're like, seriously, Hardy? Yeah, seriously. Okay, what's best? Since all three numbers that are not under the radical are all divisible by 2, best would be, that'd be best. But again, I'm satisfied with some of the others. And you're like, well, wait, if this is multiple choice and I'm wrong, how are you ever going to know? I'm going to give you space to do work. If you show me and I look and see that it's wrong and I look and see you did all this and that's the only problem, I will take less even on a multiple choice test. And now you have me on video saying it. So there. All right, last three. Negative, not for long. Pull an eye out. Square root of 64 is 8. 8i. Eight and then our final two, be careful. Add. Add just means combine like terms. You notice I'm not multiplying anything. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just finding the stuff that's like and I'm done. I hope that works the same way for you too. But the multiply one when there is no symbol in the middle, this is the one where you're either going to do the box or you're going to foil. And I'm going to foil on this one because I have colors and so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So first... Then we got outer, then we got inner, then we got last. And there's one important thing to remember before we start putting things together. I squared equals negative one. So this is really negative 14 times negative 1, which is positive 14. Now when I go to put the like stuff together, now it is like number 29. 18 and 14 is 32. Then we've got negative 12i and positive 21i is 9i. So as we conclude here, a couple things to mention. First, you will have another review like this. I'm not making another video of it, though. There will be a key, but use this video if need be, or maybe if you've worked through this first one, you'll remember a lot more on the second one than you did on the first. I'm still here for questions, but come with some stuff done like we did on here so we can straighten those few things out. Put in your time. Put in your effort. It will pay off. All right. We'll see you later.